What is up, my fellow Tarhans? I'm Captain Beans, and welcome to High Fleet Builds Flight to Haravera, where today we are going to fight some strike groups. <laughs> with some of the ships that the Beans Navy Discord server has sent me. Uh, the link to join the server is in the description below. But without further ado, let's take a look at the ships. <laughs> okay, so the first ship that we're going to take a look at is... <coughs> what is that smell? Oh no, the ship is French. No. All right, but jokes aside, here is the croissant designed by Mazuz. Uh, here are the stats for this ship, in case you are curious. And here is the ship itself. In fact, this is actually the MK9 version of the ship. There is also another version of the ship, which uh, has a slightly different armament, but we'll get to that later. So in terms of uh, armament, uh, first things first, we have a whole bunch of these uh, D80 Molot cannons, uh, which are 130 millimeter uh, small cannons. They're very nice, quite practical. And as a secondary armament, and also, I guess, as point defense, uh, you also do have two A37 phalanx systems, which are 37 millimeter CWIS. Um, fairly effective, but we'll get into point defense later on. I do have a bit of an opinion on those, uh, which I'll share later. Now, in terms of uh, armor and the ship layout, it's actually kind of, it kind of does look like a croissant a little bit, but actually even looking at this from afar, it also kind of reminds me of the Mirkinos uh, to some extent, except this one has a bit of an armor layer that covers the entire ship. Uh, so I'm guessing it's good to fight from all sides. I would assume that it would be best to fight side-to-side -side combat with this ship because it has the lowest profile in that in that plane, I guess. And also because in these sides, you don't really have a lot of flammable stuff. Oh, I guess except for these uh, ammo autoloaders right there, but I, we don't talk about that. One thing I would also like to say is that uh, this ship does not have any escape pods. Very nice. KB approves. Ammo autoloaders. I guess thrown in there uh, because who gives a shit? The only stationary thrusters we have are actually four uh, on the bottom side of the ship, which kind of makes it a bit of a small crack in the armor. Uh, so I would assume it is not a good idea to fight from the top, but you still can with this ship. It's not a big deal. And here's also the version which has a different armament. Instead of the Molot cannons, uh, this one has the MK6 180mm Schwal cannon. Basically a rapid firing 180mm gun. You know this from regular High Fleet. This thing goes boom, 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 boom. And really, there's not really that much of a difference between that and this ship, except that this one actually ha doesn't really have an ammo autoloader on the sides here. So this is actually a little bit better at fighting side to side combat. Now, let's first get the MK9 into combat, and then we will get the MK10, which is this one, into combat. I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Alright, so here is a bit of a uh, strike group right here that I've just called upon. This is difficulty level 5 with only large ships, uh, hence you can see all of these uh, fairly big ships. And that is pretty much going to be the standard that I'm going to test all ships in terms of tactical combat. Alright, without further ado, let's show these guys how tasty... Oh, who gives a shit? Let's just go. <laughs> Let's go, bitches! Vive l'Empro! Vive la France! Let's go! <laughs> Alright, now we're gonna we're gonna have to watch out for the Altair missiles. Uh, this Zephyr is actually going to launch one anytime soon. We gotta prepare our PD in order for that to be able to, I guess, work. Okay, Spiker, 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 shoot it! Okay, that one didn't do so much damage. Um, Altairs are kind of a hit, hit or miss uh, type of thing. Um, no pun in intended. But sometimes they do a whole ton of... Ugh. They sometimes do a whole ton of damage, but other times they don't do damage at all to your ship. Um, as you can see, I've already destroyed one of them, uh, which is fine, which is good. Uh, because I am going to destroy this... Uh, 
core Zephyr first. Also, a bit of a fun fact, the Zephyr was actually invented by the French. Uh, now, Zephyrs are also very common in Russia, but the special thing about the Russian Zephyrs is that they are covered in chocolate. That's where they came up with this idea. But the actual candy was invented in France, so technically we are fighting a food war, if you really think about it. <laughs> Alright, now we got the Republica. I'm actually going to keep the Republica alive because the Republica is not a very scary ship. Uh, it does have a little bit of artillery and it does have aircraft, but the aircraft can't really do much to us. Um, actually, the, actually the, this Sikonian right here is a little bit more of a threat, so I'm going to fire at this guy. I'm also going to have to um, move to... Uh, starboard a little bit more because the top starboard armor is a little bit damaged. Also, just destroy those planes because it's shooting at our unarmored spots. That's not very nice. That's not very uh, Vive la France of you. I'm, I'm probably butchering all of the French pronunciation, but I mean, imagine inventing a language that only French people can speak. Unbelievable. <laughs> Also, I like how that Sikonia just absolutely crashed into that Republica and did a ramming order. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, speaking of, there is a uh, Zephyr right there. Let's keep shooting at this guy. Let's shoot at his missile silos so that we could avoid having Spiker, 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 Spiker! Oh shit, our armor is getting slowly destroyed. Uh, that's not good. We got. Let's get above this guy and shoot at his missiles. Okay, we did kill the Zephyr. Our port side is completely destroyed, almost. Uh, our fuel tanks are actually still fine, more or less. Okay, now this fuel tank is on fire, and I can't put out the fire. Uh, so my ship is basically burning, and it's about to explode of an ammo explosion, so you know what? Reming order! Come on, flank speed! Ramming order! Come on! Come on! Come on, kill that Zephyr! Ah, we did it! We did it! We killed it! And we're actually still alive, more or less. I'm pretty sure this guy's gonna kill us. Okay. Second ramming order! Ramming order! Let's go! We killed two ships with two ramming orders. <laughs> All right, so let's now test out the MK-10 version of this ship, uh, i.e. the one with the singular Shkval cannon. Um, for some reason, the game doesn't want to spawn more ships in despite level five dif difficulty, unlike the previous round, but who gives a shit? Let's just go. All right, let's go, bitches. Round two of Vive la France. Vive la baguette. Vive la croissant. Actually, what if I made an entire fleet of French uh, pastry ships? <laughs> Just the croissant as a combat ship, the baguette as a flagman. And I don't know, a pain au chocolat, I guess. I I'm butchering these pronunciations, probably. But, I mean, again, like, only French people can speak French properly. Uh, I, I rush. Okay. My balls went too far. Okay, nice. Uh, we destroyed that Zephyr right there. Uh, can you please shoot down that missile? Okay, the 37mm is not really doing too well against missiles. Uh, that is actually a problem, uh, because 37mm uh, is supposed to be the point defense on this ship. Alright, keep firing. 
Just keep pounding at his bottom side. It's fine. Okay, shoot down that spiker. Yes, nice. Oh, wait, what? What was that? Did you guys hear that? I could have sworn it was Mouse Chan speaking to me. I don't know what he was saying, but... Oh, shit. I don't think my Shkval can fire anymore. Oh, no, it still can. Oh, I can't shoot my PDs anymore. Oh, that's a problem. But you know what? I guess let's stay... Let's keep this guy to our side. And let's keep pounding him with whatever artillery we still have left. From the Shkval. Je suis Capitaine Beans. <laughs> Bro, I don't know. Ima imagine having to learn French, though. Alright, that's it. Um, okay, we did a lot better with this one. Uh, we did, again, take too many hits with the Altairs in our top side, and that kind of broke our armor a little bit. One thing I would like to say about Altairs is that um, fighting combats in simulation like this is not really realistic. It's not really accurate to a proper campaign. And that's because strike groups typically tend to launch all of their strategical missiles at you before they even get to use the Altairs in tactical combat. So... Even if some of the ships don't survive in this little simulation, they might actually have a chance in actual combat. In a campaign. So just keep that one in mind. Uh, now the Kosan does have potential at uh, being a ship uh, capable of heavy fighting. Uh, but against strike groups? I am not exactly sure. Because first of all, this ship has a pretty thin layer of armor. Um, Unless this ship is designed to be more maneuverable and actually evade stuff and also shoot down all of the Altair missiles that this thing uh, will encounter. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much anything in flight to Haravera could easily get through the armor and explode it very nicely. Now one thing to also keep in mind is that this ship was designed in vanilla game before being imported into flight to Haravera. Uh, how I could tell? And that's because the author used the uh, D-80 Molot cannons. Uh, what I would probably do is replace at least a couple of them with uh, these Gao 130 Falx cannons. These are basically 130mm rapid firing guns. This thing basically has higher fire rate, higher reload speed, uh, basically just a superior uh, Molot cannon. And it's also twin barreled, so it shoots like basically two shells at a time. So that's very nice. Uh, actually, we are going to see a lot of these cannons uh, in later builds in this video. So. Uh, if you're designing a ship in flight to Haravera that's capable of good firepower, you might want to take a look at these. Uh, these are pretty good. And I guess the croissant as a whole, uh, both versions, I guess is work. Let's move on to the next one. I present to you the Hellfire, designed by the one and only Mr. Vessel. Yo, beans. Oh, hey, Mr. Vessel. Uh, good to see you here. Here are the stats for this ship. And basically, this is a uh, type of, I'm guessing, a destroyer. Uh, judging by the name of this ship, it has a DR in its designation. Uh, hmm, this ship is quite strange. Uh, the reason is because I'm seeing those sprint missiles up here, which I guess are used for intercepting missiles. But I'm not seeing any fire control radar to support them and to actually guide them. Uh... All right, okay, that's odd. I'm assuming that the FCR was probably an oversight by the designer. Um, not a huge deal. I guess if I wanted to use the ship, I could probably slap it on somewhere. Now, in terms of armament, uh, this ship very nicely has a whole bunch of Gao 130 Falx cannons. It has three of those. Uh, as I said before, these are really nice 130mm guns. We'll actually see the, how they work in actual combat. Uh, you are going to very like it. And you can easily tell that this is a Mr. Vessel ship, uh, first of all by the shape. It is very much inspired by Nebulus Fleet Command, 
As you can see by these uh, stationary thrusters on the side here, I'm guessing on the stern and on the bow right here as well. This must be the, um, the reverse thruster or I guess whatever they're called. Also, this is a Mr. Vessel ship uh, because if you look at the fuel lines, uh, they actually go all the way through and to all of the thrusters on aboard this ship. Maybe except for this one and this one, but otherwise it's fine. It actually does work really well. Very aesthetic. Uh, but also very functional because having fuel lines you're basically just adding more fuel to the ship and it gives more of a combat time which is very nice this ship has a very nice combat time i gotta say now additionally to all of this uh, armament that we're seeing here we do have a couple of h 200 altair missiles uh, very nice uh, these can be used either strategically or tactically we're, pro we're probably going to use them tactically here in just a minute and we also have a couple of r6 nadir missiles uh, these are unique to Flight to Haravera. They're basically armor-piercing missiles. They are hella fast and they deal hella damage. And they also pierce armor. And in terms of uh, point defense, uh, this ship very correctly has a whole bunch of ZAS-57 SPAG cannons. Now, one thing you should keep in mind about uh, PD is that 57mm is actually slightly better at stopping missiles than the 37mm guns. You might see this in combat as we go on, uh, but basically if you want to stop more missiles than artillery, you gotta use the 57s. If you want to be able to shoot down enemy artillery on the, on the other hand, uh, you gotta use the 37mm. So if you're undecided about what PD to use, think about these two factors. And the ship has five uh, PDTs, so that's very nice. And you know what? Let's test this one out in combat, see how this performs, and uh, yeah, I'm guessing Mr. Vessel is going to be very happy. Okay, so here we have a whole bunch of large ships as before, difficulty level 5, this time with the Hellfire over here. Uh, the Hagrianian is kind of a threat here. Uh, let's see if we can take this guy out first, and then we'll deal with the rest. Alright, let's go bitches! Oh, Spiker, 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 Spiker! Come on! And you didn't stop the spiker, bro. Alright, open fire on the Hagrianian, mainly because that guy is annoying as hell. Because not only does he have artillery, he has a whole bunch of missiles in his uh, missile base. Alright, stop the missiles and keep firing at the Hagrianian. Alright, destroy all of those spikers. How did we already lose a thruster? Oh, we got blasted in the bow. Alright, I guess that makes sense. Fair enough then. Alright, Agrianian, could you, could you please unalive yourself? That would be lovely. Alright, stop that. Kill it! Kill this missile! Wait, I think it died, no? Uh, I don't know. I can't really tell. Agrianian is actually almost being destroyed. Uh, he is still launching missiles at me, which is very rude. Very rude indeed. And for his rudeness, I am going to absolutely bombard him with my artillery. I'm not going to use my missiles just yet because everyone has a shit ton of sprints. Uh, they're going to pretty much stop all of the missiles that I'm going to send at them. But if I do get an advantage over some enemy, for example, if I'm just below them, I might actually launch a missile or two at, at them. So that's probably the strategy that I'm going to use now in order to avoid my missiles being shot down. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter what we fight anymore because we've ki pretty much killed the biggest threat here, which was the Hagrianian. Uh, let's kill the Republica in order to make all of the planes surrender, all of the enemy planes surrender. Actually, could we even launch a missile at it? Oh, but then it would have to traverse and stuff like that. Plus, it's already being damaged enough to a point where if I just shoot at it a couple more times, it'll, it'll die. Okay, get rid of that spiker, please. There we go. Ooh, that must have been a Nadir missile because of the way it exploded. It is a high yield missile, so it has a bigger explosion. Okay, uh, we might want to stop bow tanking. Uh, we might want to stop facing the enemy with our bow. 
At least from, from below. I think at this angle we're actually still more or less fine. Uh, let's keep firing. I could have sworn I heard mouse. I, I could have sworn I heard mouse chan say something. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but I sure hope I don't know. I have no idea. Alright, here we got the Savam. Oh, our oh shit, uh, we might want to move on to a different side. Oh shit, what? What happened? How did that explode? Did a fuel tank blow up? I mean, all of the ammo autoloaders on this ship are covered in armor, so there's no way that an ammo explosion could have happened. There's no way. So I'm not exactly sure what happened here. Ooh! Our thrusters at the bow of the ship stopped working, so we only have the uh, stern thrusters. Alright then, guess that makes sense. Oh, and we won! Ah, nice. Oh, and we also gained some honor, that's really nice. Alright, let's take a look at the damage. Uh, the damage is pretty significant, uh, but it only took the damage in the bow of the ship. Now, what happened here, I'm not exactly sure. I'm gonna have to probably go over the footage uh, to say what happened here. I'm assuming it was a fuel explosion, because the ammo magazines are actually here, uh, covered in the armor, so it could not have been an ammo explosion. The bow got shot up pretty nicely, uh, both with altairs and artillery and stuff like that, but the rest of the ship is actually more or less fine. We actually managed to preserve the missiles, which is really good. Mr. Vessel, good job designing this ship, is work. Let's get back to the ship works and uh, we'll say our final words about this ship. I'm assuming this is actually a uh, older version of this ship because again, I am not seeing a fire control radar on this ship. What I would probably do to uh, change that is probably place a fire control radar up top. Maybe like right here. Um, not in this exact configuration of course, uh, but of course make a, a nice uh, elaborate uh, tower, armored tower. Which would also, which should also hopefully shield the uh, the bridge a little bit by having a tower here. But otherwise, the Hellfire is work. Hehe. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, or I guess mostly gentlemen, uh, I present to you the Kara, designed by Mouse Chan himself. Uh, the guy, the same guy who designed the Odessa, and the same guy who uh, designed the Zaporizhia. Now, let's see if the Kara uh, lives up to the expectations of the designer. Uh, <laughs> now, one thing I would also like to uh, point out is that the Kara originally was designed in the vanilla game, but then it was imported into Flight to Haravera and converted by Mr. Vessel. So, thank you to Mr. Vessel as well. Uh, from what we can see here, this is a very uh, ship-looking ship. Uh, it has a clear bow right here, a clear stern right here, which by the way, the stern is also very unarmored right here, which allows for thrusters, but if anything goes in there, uh, that's pretty much the stern just gone. Uh, what else? The bow armor right here, below, it, it's kind of thin. Um, I mean, having the armor right here up top, it's actually good. But having these triangular pieces right here, or I guess the trapezoidal pieces right here like this, it's not very good armor. I would probably make that a little bit heavier, but I guess we'll see in combat how it fares. One thing I would like to point out, um, actually before we do that, here are the stats of this ship. The armament on this ship is very interesting, because look, uh, instead of traditional artillery, uh, this ship has a bu whole bunch of uh, Z60 Smerk cannons which are basically 220mm multiple rocket launcher systems, or MRLS systems. These things shoot rockets, uh, mind you. Uh, it's probably the same things that we are going to see being fired at us 
from an enemy ship called the Resus. Uh, this is probably the only ship on this list which has such an armament and and as point defense we have uh, the typical 2A37 phalanx system. As I said before, the phalanx is a little bit better at stopping artillery uh, but the spag is slightly better at stopping missiles. So, uh, I don't know. From what I can see in the armor layout, it is decently protected uh, quite nicely. Uh, the only thing that I'm noticing is that there's quite a bit of cracks here and there. Uh, a big one right here. But we also do have some in the tower of this ship. I mean, look, this such a space like this, if it is uh, breached by an Altair missile, it could actually potentially even reach the ammo boxes right here and explode uh, the bridge very nicely. And also a little bit of a crack right here as well. But I'm not exactly sure if this is even considered like a crack. Damage in this game works really weirdly. If you have like a teeny tiny crack, if an Altair goes in there, kablooey. Uh, <laughs> that part of the ship is gone. But okay, let's test this ship out against uh, strike groups. Oh no. That is a Memnon that we're seeing here. <gasps> Basically, it's the biggest ship in Flight to Haravera. And it is the scariest one uh, because of the artillery and the fact that it's just so armored, so big, and so hard to kill. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be fun. And paired with a Resus, of course, uh, because uh, because of course the shield bearer had to put the most annoying ships into this mod, uh, even with large ships. Bro, what the hell? All right, let's go, bitches. Uh, I'm gonna shoot at the Altair missile, which was launched at me as soon as we went into combat. You didn't really see it because um, it was above the screen. And we just got hit by another one. Uh, the Resus is actually behind me right now. Uh, I am blasting it with rockets. But hopefully I should be able to get it out of into view. Okay, let's dodge his rockets. Fire more rockets at this guy. Oh, we're actually blowing him up very nicely. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's try to also incapacitate the um, the Sava. Let's get it damaged enough so that we could kill it immediately as soon as the Memnon enters battle. Just so that we don't have to worry about the Sava also pounding our ass. As we are pounding the uh, the Memnon with our rockets. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's kill the let's kill this guy. Kill this guy now, really quickly. Come on. Before we get hit by the, by the Memnon's artillery. All right, there we go. All right, fire everything we got at the Memnon. Kill it as fast as we can before he manages to send all of his missiles at me. Wait, what? Uh, we just got hit by a missile in a, in a, in a weak spot. Oh, no. And we ran out of rocket launchers. Oh, no, we didn't. Uh, we only have one. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? Ramming order. Come on. Let's smother this guy. Let's go. And we barely put a dent in him. Let's try this again. I did not mean to kill the Sava first. Um, oh, we're gonna have a really bad time now. Because we have both the Memnon and this guy in battle now. Uh, we gotta kill the Resus first.
Actually, it would be nice if we could stay behind the Resus and uh, avoid being fired at by the Memnon for just a moment. Okay, the Memnon is actually where I'm at, so let's just get behind the Resus, get to the port side of the Resus. He is shooting rockets at me and also armor piercing. Very nice. My armor is probably not going to survive a whole lot of that. Our frames are dropping harder than ever. Which is also very nice. Alright, come on. Die. Ah, thank you, mouse. Thank you, mouse. Alright, now let's focus fire on the Memnon. Now, the key to fighting this guy is that we should probably be moving around a lot. And avoid getting hit as, as much as we can. Shoot at the guy's artillery, shoot at the guy's missiles, and shoot at the guy. Alright, fire! Fire the rockets! Actually, no, don't. Because I'm missing that volley a lot. Uh, shit. Come on. Come on! Ah, uh, we've just- we've just done the exact same thing. We just got hit in that weak spot. You know what? Okay, I'm starting to think that that wasn't a uh, unlucky shot. I'm pretty sure that is a fundamental problem of this ship. Um, yeah, see, uh, because we've got we've got because we've gotten hit with missiles in this direction, the missile got into this little crack right here and caused an ammo explosion right here. So yeah, it is not a, it's not a fluke. Uh, this is a genuine problem of this ship. But otherwise, the Kara is definitely capable of fighting strike groups. Uh, the only thing I would probably do with this ship is just pretty much just cover up uh, this portion of the armor. Same goes with uh, this portion of the armor. And there you go, you've just fixed the Kara. And, and also make the armor over here uh, thicker as well. So yeah, uh, what do I think of this ship? I do like the fact that this ship has the rocket launchers instead of your traditional artillery. Uh, this might be one of the reasons I might consider using this ship, because I've never used rocket launchers before in an actual campaign, uh, so it would certainly be fun to have a ship with rocket launchers. Uh, in terms of everything else, the armor is pretty decent. Uh, oh, also I might want to cover this little gap right here as well. You know, because, yeah, this could be another angle to get hit by. But otherwise, the armor is now fixed. Okay, there we go. And yeah, it's actually less than 100k, so there might be a chance I might actually choose this ship. Uh, just because, I mean, it is work. <laughs> So yeah, Mouse, uh, good job for designing this ship. Even though this is mainly a cosmetic ship uh, with these uh, like turrets that you made here, uh, the armor cracks are the problem here. Big problem. So yeah, I've just fixed it. So yeah, I'm just going to save that real quick and we'll move on to the other ships. Next up on the block, we got the King Donut designed by Mzuz, the same guy who designed the croissants. Um, actually, I've just realized uh, Mzuz must like pastry a lot. I mean, he has designed the two uh, different pastries as ships. <laughs> That's really funny. But basically, this guy right here is essentially just a huge-ass donut with a whole bunch of 57mm guns. I guess that's pretty based. Anything else that I'm seeing here that's pretty interesting? Okay, it has big landing legs uh, for landing, alright. Stationary thrusters at the bottom, okay, that makes sense. A whole bunch of thrusters, fuel... Stuff like that all around the ship. That's really nice. Okay, that works. And I like the fact that the middle of the ship is completely empty and completely unarmored. But the bridge is also here, so... I don't know. Now, if I were to put rocket launchers on this ship... Um, let's just say we might have problems. Because as far as I'm aware, uh, rocket launchers have a bit of a problem. 
Uh, sometimes rockets can explode inside of the ship uh, if um, the ship is very big. Uh, because the way projectiles work in this game is that uh, when they cover a certain distance out of the muzzle of the of the guns that shoot them, they actually don't do any sort of damage to your ship or to the enemy ship. Um, once they pass a certain distance, that's when the shells become lethal. Uh, with rockets, it is the same thing. And so if you're, if you're designing a very large ship, you have to keep that in mind. You cannot really... Uh, you can sometimes have th things explode inside of the ship. And especially with such a design like this, with like a big hole in the middle. Yeah, that could po pose problems. And that's probably the reason why the designer didn't put any large uh, caliber al artillery. Just 57mm guns, both as uh, artillery and PD. Uh, pretty based and actually quite practical, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, also, here are the stats for this ship. And you know what, let's test it out in combat, shall we? You know, let's bring the law enforcement into this operation. I mean, look at all of these crooks right, right there. Oh, all right, let's go. Oh, we already got spikers on the radar. Ha, that was very rude of you. Um, that Altair just completely deleted the armor on the top right of us. And they are, and the ships are conveniently located at the top right. So, okay, let's get below these guys and let us, um, let us put them into custody. Hagrianian, you are under arrest. Stop resisting. Get on the ground. Stop resisting. He's resisting. Shots fired. Oh, okay, Tango down. Let's focus on the Zephyr now. Oh, the Hagrianian's corpse uh, saved me from that Altair missile. That's nice. Holy shit, just 57mm is just shredding all of these guys. Damn. I mean, okay, this ship does have like 50 turrets, so yeah, I guess that makes sense. And it's 57 millimeters, so it is, so it is artillery. Um, it does decent damage. But this Hagrianian is again being very annoying with his missiles and stuff like that. Also notice how the 57 millimeter is really good at stopping missiles. Well, aside from the fact that I just have a shit ton of them. Uh, <laughs> if I would have had this many Sea Whis, it wouldn't have been as successful. Oh, we just barely stopped an Altair just above us. That is crazy. Okay, kill the Hagrianian. Or, I, I'm sorry, not kill. Uh, use less than lethal force on this guy. Because even though we are using cannons, we are using the smaller caliber cannons, so... We're not exactly bringing any heavy artillery into this game. Alright, Zephyr, you have the right to remain silent. Get on the ground! Put your hands behind your back! <laughs> Honestly, what if I just bring the Donut as the flagship and just, I mean... It would certainly work because uh, of the good, because of the good uh, missile defense, because of the 57 millimeter guns. I mean, it does have pretty terrible stats uh, in terms of uh, range and stuff like that. But I mean, hopefully, uh, the rest of the fleet should be able to over overcome such an issue. I would much prefer for the flagman to have a range slightly bigger than the. Uh, than like 2,000, but if my flagship could survive uh, this battle right here uh, and still be able to fight things in the future, I might consider this being as a flagship and a strike group fighting ship. So I might even economize on some money here. All right, okay. Resus, 
Same thing goes for you. You have the right to remain silent. Uh, put your hands behind your head and uh, yeah, face the wall, please. You are under arrest for war crimes. Yeah, who the fuck farted? Huh? Who did it? It smells here. Ugh! Bro. What the hell? It smells like chicken curry, bro. Ugh! That shit smells so bad when it's coming out of the other end. Alright, come on. Just die. Please. Jesus, you have nothing else. All right, there we go. That's the donut. The king donut, I might add. In terms of damage, we only suffered superficial damage. Uh, the Altair missiles did blow up a little bit of the armor uh, from this side. And the artillery uh, did get a little bit uh, of a pounding on this side of the ship. The ship is fully intact otherwise and is capable of fighting more strike groups. So this is probably one of the few ships in this video that might actually sur survive a couple of fights in a row. Um, again, I might actually choose this as the flagship, uh, just because it's funny, and because I can roleplay as a uh, <laughs> Romani Empire law enforcement. <laughs> ah, but yeah, with this absolutely delicious treat out of the way, let's get to the ship works and let's move on to another ship. Up next, we have the Nephilim. Uh, this is originally uh, named in Russian, but I had to translate the name into English, or I guess just rewrite the name. Uh, this is designed by The. Uh, yeah, that's his name. And uh, one thing that I've noticed is that it is underpowered, so I'm just gonna... Oh, I could just remove this and it'll be full power. All right then, okay, fair enough. Uh, here are the stats for this ship. And here is the ship uh, for this ship. Uh, as you can see here, the main armaments of this ship uh, are the Shkval cannon at the very middle of the ship. Very nice. We also have a couple of AK-100s, 100, 100 millimeter guns. Uh, very interesting for a ship of this size. Only two of these cannons. And on each wing of the ship, we have a couple of uh, 2A37 phalanx systems. Uh, I, I'm guessing as PD. Uh, so yeah, that's very nice. Up aloft, we have a whole rack of R9 Sprint missiles uh, to defend against incoming missiles. And uh, a couple of fire control radars to support and guide the uh, Sprint missiles. In terms of armor layout, uh, this ship is almost completely covered with only some mild cracks here and there. Uh, but they are actually also filled up with these uh, APS Balash systems. Uh, so... Theoretically, uh, this ship could take a little bit of artillery fire. Uh, the Palash systems are going to disintegrate some of the first shots and the armor should stop some of the other shots. Uh, the bottom side seems to be okay. Uh, the ammo autoloaders are kind of interestingly placed. All I'm gonna say is the ammo placement is very interesting on this ship. Uh, we got big ammo modules on either sides of the ship. I hope that's not going to cause any problems in the combat that we're going to face. And we also have a whole bunch of little ones, I'm guessing, just scattered uh, about this ship. Because uh, spread isn't a thing at all in this game. Alright, who gives a shit? Let's go fight some stuff. Eh, let's go. Oh, missiles. Spiker, spiker, spiker! Okay, Sending. more missiles incoming. Let's use the sprints to our advantage, since we haven't used them in the strategical combat. Uh, because this is simulation combat, so we're fine here. What the fuck was that? Who just moaned? This isn't exactly... Uh, <laughs> since when is this game? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna continue that sentence. I'm just gonna keep firing at them. Oh, the ship is actually decently maneuverable, uh, despite the fact that we are getting shot at pretty nicely. The Shkval is doing the majority of the damage. Uh, 
Oh! Okay, I think we are out of sprints, so it might be a good idea if we could focus fire on the uh, Zephyr. That way we could destroy the one of the few launchers of the Altair missiles um, first, and then we can focus on everything else. Uh, another Spiker. I guess I go down with the ship. Um, what just happened? Did we just get an unlucky hit from an Altair and just completely exploded because our ammo modules were scattered about our ship and caused a chain reaction? Oh shit. Uh, now we got hit in the bottom side of this ship uh, and we're getting blown up very nicely. No, we do not abandon ship. That's cowardice. That is cowardice, and, well, I'm not really the one that's responsible for dealing with cowards. Uh, that would be Commissar Beans. I'm Captain Beans. I'm the one who gives, a, who gives the ramming order. Which we can't, because we have no control of the ship. <laughs> Fuck my life! Yeah, exactly. I can agree with you, Mouse. <sighs> okay, I'm not even going to try with this combat anymore. I can tell that this ship was designed for a troll, because who in their right mind would put ammo modules on the exterior of the ship? I mean, they are literally exposed ammo. I mean, look! Just, just an unlucky shot into this art, into this part of the ship, and it just... Blew, blew. Boom, boom, gone. Just, yeah, thruster taken out of combat. Uh, this thruster as well. I mean, fuel tank just deleted. And, okay, we might as well just take out the Shkval. I mean, who needs it anyway? And if we get shot up a little bit more, uh, you know, we, we get split up into two, you know? And, uh, yeah. Alright, but jokes aside, uh, this ship is actually really good at trolling. Uh, so, yeah, I, am, I will be sure to share this ship uh, next time I want someone to test a ship. And they don't know about this ship. <laughs> just to annoy them. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, it is a fairly good concept, though. Uh, having a Shkval and two Aiken 100s as its main armament uh, could be good, because the main Shkval gun could be good against ships, whereas the Aiken 100s could be equipped with, for example, proximity fuses. And uh, yeah, every time you fire those, you can actually intercept uh, missiles and stuff like that with proximity fuses. Especially because 100mm proximity fuses are the cheapest kind that you could find. So it is a really good thing to have these guns on this ship. Uh, I would change the 37mm guns to 57mm guns, uh, again for better PD against uh, missile defense. And uh, yeah, I would probably rearrange the ammo very slightly uh, to make the ship just a little bit more uh, survivable. And uh, being able to take a hit uh, unlike some people uh, with uh, jokes, uh, now that I have said the least politically correct thing ever, let's move on to the next ship. Up next, in the High Fleet Engineering Department, we have the Oslaba right here. And we also have the Peresvet right here, which have both been designed by Microscope. And I'll, I'll talk about both of them later, let's start with the Oslaba first. Now the Oslab, as you can see, is a uh, kind of like a light cruiser right here. Uh, it, it is mainly designed for combat, as you can see by the armor layout, and also the fact that it only has four uh, GAU-130 Falx cannons as its armament. It doesn't have any PD whatsoever, uh, but it also does have some sprint missiles al aloft, along with some fire control ra radars to actually guide them. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to be useful for strategical uh, missile defense, uh, so I wouldn't really expect to be using those in actual combat, but we are going to use them in combat anyway, because there's no way for this ship to intercept missiles. I mean, I guess you could also try shooting the artillery at the missile. I mean, these guns should have enough firepower to do so. Now, in terms of everything else, uh, this ship is actually kind of smaller than the Perisviet class, uh, I guess that's understandable. Uh, this is actually slightly cheaper than the Perisvet, but uh, this ship is uh, still uh, quite potent looking. Oh, I just realized there is actually a little bit of armor inside of this ship. Oh yeah, look, see? 
Uh, there is a little, I guess, how do I say, like a little thingy of armor in here uh, between this fuel tank and this thruster right here. Ah, that actually is quite ingen ingenious of the designer. I'm assuming this is to cover up this uh, crack and also to protect these uh, ammo autoloaders inside of the ship uh, from uh, uh, rapid uh, flammable reactions. <coughs> uh, the landing legs are also kind of funny. They're really, <laughs> they look like crab legs almost. The, the thing that this ship is missing are some crab arms, so, you know, crab claws. And then this thing would look like a proper crab. Now let's see how this thing fights in combat, because I am actually looking forward to this thing actually fight, because this is probably one of the few ships in this in this uh, video that are actually good at combat. <laughs> let's just put it that way. Uh, here is uh, difficulty level 5, large ships with the uh, Osleba. Let's go. It was just such a good thing that those sprints stopped that missile. Oh, Spiker! Okay, we gotta shoot at the missile silos of this guy. Because, uh, yeah, the Altairs are going to screw us up if we get hit by those. Okay, the missile silos on the Zephyr are dead. So, let's just keep shooting at the Zephyr. Uh, we're gonna keep the Republica over there in combat. Uh, so that we don't cycle all the way to the most dangerous ships and have to fight both dangerous ships at the same time. As we did before. As we did before. Okay, we got another, uh, what's it called, Zephyr. So, this time let's actually try to stay below, or actually behind the uh, Republica. Hopefully this is actually going to be a little bit of cover from Altair missiles, from things like that. Oh, Spiker, 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 Spiker! And of course my sprints uh, target uh, their enemy planes. Uh, that's, um, of course, that's very nice. Uh, they're not doing anything against enemy Altair missiles. Okay, fire at the... Fire, fire at this guy. They are shooting at our fuel tank a little bit, but that's completely fine. Uh, we should be okay. We do have also a bit of armor in between the fuel tanks and the ammo boxes, so hopefully uh, if they shoot 37mm guns, they're not going to set our fuel on fuel or um, ammo on fire. Okay, this Zephyr is about to die, so let's just finish him off. He still has an Altair. Oh, Spiker, 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 Spiker! Never mind. Oh, oh! I ran out of fire suppression systems. Ah, yay! Yeah, that's not good. That is not good. That is not good. Um, yeah, the ship might need a little bit more fire suppression systems if I want to really survive this. Okay, we do have a Sikonian in the battle. Let's try to stay in combat as long as possible. Shoot at the Republica. Uh, the planes are not really doing much, so I'm only going to shoot at the ships. And also that proximity fuse is hitting us in the starboard side where we still have armor, unlike the port side where we pretty much almost lost a bit of armor on our shoulder there. So, let's just keep firing. Come on! Why are you guys evacuating for no reason? Bro, I didn't give the order. You cowards. You absolute cowards. Into the pit with you all. Alright, let's try this again. Oh, oh, okay, target priority. This guy, this guy, this guy. Shoot him. Shoot him. Shoot him in the missile silos. Destroy his missile silos. Destroy his missile silos. And then shoot at him. Alright, cool. I'm pretty sure that's all of his missile silos destroyed. Oh, there is still one in there. Let's see if we can do some precise artillery work and hit that real quick. Oh, these ships are in a firing line, so let's just 
aim in this general direction, we will hit both of these ships, so that's completely fine. The Zephyr is taking cover using his friend. Uh, that's quite um, noble of him, <laughs> I guess. Okay, uh, let's let's kill, not kill, sorry, let's incapacitate the Republica enough so that if we shoot at it a little bit more, it'll die. Uh, that way, it we don't take too much time killing the rest of the ships once we cycle through both of the... Oh shit! It's coming from this way! Okay, uh, everyone, shoot at the missile silos of this guy now. Come on. Missile silos, get destroyed, please. Alright, come on. Okay, th I'm pretty sure most of the missile silos on this Zephyr are damaged, so let's just keep pounding him from above. Uh, and let's just then... Oh, he's using fire suppression systems. Uh, that's quite... Quite responsible of him, but I am going to relieve them of their duties soon. My balls went too far. Yes, Mouse, they did. All right, now hopefully we should have only the Republica and the Sikonian, which both of them do not have Altair missiles, so we should have an easier time now. Very nice. Oh, there are some escape pods stuck to our ship. Oh shit! They're boarding our ship! Quick! Kill the enemy marines! Oh, that's a cluster missile that he's launching. Oh yeah, I could tell because this missile is slower than the others that we've seen so far. Oh, we are getting a little bit of honor from this combat. I'm assuming it's because um, this ship is slightly cheaper than the, the other ones here. I mean, we did kill two Zephyrs and a Republica, so of course these guys are more expensive than the Oslabe right here. My balls went too far. Nice! Uh, damage report, uh, there is a fair amount of damage on the lower starboard side. Uh, that, I'm assuming, is probably because of the Altair missiles. Uh, the Cluster missiles has also done a little bit of work on uh, exploding that armor away properly once the armor has uh, become red, uh, meaning heavily damaged. Otherwise, everything else is superficial damage. Uh, no, compo no major components lost. The thruster is still online, I'm pretty sure. I have no idea. Uh, everything else is okay. Uh, even one fire control radar is still working, which is insane. I was expecting to completely lose both of them in this entire fight. But even if I lose both of them, you could still find them. Uh, they're relatively cheap. You could find them anywhere. Just pick a random Zhabka in the middle of Trakia. You'll find the one. Alright, so this is the Peresvet, designed by Microscope, the same guy who designed the, the uh, Oslabe. Uh, here are the stats for this ship. And uh, the only difference between this and the other ship that we've seen before is that this one is slightly more armored. Uh, first of all, at the bottom of this ship, and also up here at the top, where you have all of these uh, R9 Sprint missile, uh, missile bays. Uh, the ship layout is also slightly different. Uh, instead of two large thrusters uh, that we can see here, uh, we have three uh, smaller rotary thrusters on each side of the ship. Interesting design choice. But we still do have the one singular uh, stationary thruster at the bottom, which is heavily armored. The only difference in armament this time is that uh, we have three uh, Gao 130 Falx cannons instead of four. And, but this time we have also uh, four 2A37 Phalanx systems. Uh, as Seawiz, I guess it's fine to have four of those, uh, but again, I pre I'm pretty sure I've made my opinion clear on uh, PDs and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll see how this thing works. Uh, you know what, let's, let's throw it into combat, same way as we did. Okay, um, alright, that's fair, I guess. Alright, let's go. Okay, uh, the main theme here with the Microscope uh, cruisers is that you should stay above the enemy because that is 
the best position to be in. Kill that plane. There we go. And also let's use the Sea Wiz to shoot at enemy artillery as well. Since, again, 37mm uh, is slightly better at taking out artillery. Artillery fire. Actually, it might be a better idea to keep the... Um, we will do, we will kill the Safa first, since it is a slightly more dangerous ship uh, in terms of uh, actual firepower. We will try to at least cripple, or not cripple, but basically weaken the uh, Republica until I'm pretty sure another Republica comes here. Kill this Republica, kill the other Republica, and we will get uh, the Zephyr. Okay, let's preserve our our 37mm shot for enemy artillery. Okay, those are proximity fuses, they're not gonna do shit to us. Okay, there we go. Let's stay above them. I know I might be I might be blocking my ship though. Uh, I'm gonna try to get out of the way. Okay, the Republica down below is actually getting on fire a little bit. That's really good. Okay, shoot at this guy's artillery. There we go. And keep firing upon the... Uh, the thing that we've been already keeping fire upon. Okay, cool. Okay, now we got the Zephyr. Uh, let's see where it is. It is right there, so... Everything we have, shoot at it. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure that Altair did actually hit us. In the bottom side of the ship. Okay, I'm pretty sure we did stop the other one though. Uh, shoot at the missile silos. Even the 37mm could actually do some serious damage on the missile silos, but I am going to use mainly the artillery. The one thing I absolutely love about the Falx guns is that they reload really fast, and they have a fast fire rate, so you can pretty much just wait for a couple, for like a second, and then just keep firing volleys at it. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look at that. Okay, now he's doing the hiding, which is very cowardly of them. We don't, uh, we don't value cow cowardice here in the Beans Navy. Uh, Commissar Beans will be very upset at this site right here. Okay, there we go. All right, and a finishing blow. Hopefully a finishing blow. Yes, it is. Oh, shoot the escape pods. Shoot the escape pods! I just realized, there are so many escape pods here. That is a lot of enemy marines that could board our ship. Uh, we might want to take those out real quick. But I mean, most of them, I'm pretty sure, are crashing into the ground, so they're not going to board us. I mean, you could always just execute them later on, after the battle, it's fine. That's why we have firing lines. Uh, that is the Pirisvet uh, in combat. Uh, we did actually lose one Falx gun somehow. I'm not exactly sure how, but otherwise the damage that we took is actually very similar to that last battle. Uh, we took a, a heavy amount of damage in the bottom side, uh, bottom starboard side. That's because of the Altairs and also other annoying shit. But otherwise everything is superficial, superficial damage. 
No major components lost, except for that one Falx gun. And yeah. Ooh, the fire control ra radars are still online. That's good. That's good. That's good. The Falx gun, however, is probably the most expensive thing that we just lost. Uh, those are fairly hard to find in an actual campaign, so that would be a pretty, pretty hefty loss, not gonna lie. Uh, that is the Piresvet, designed by Microscope. Uh, I would overall say that both the Oslebe and the Piresvet are very potent ships, uh, if you know how to use them in combat, uh, especially taking advantage of enemy weak spots, as I've shown you uh, with the uh, Zephyrs. The Zephyrs have a very exposed uh, missile racks. If you shoot at those with 130mm Falx guns, uh, you could easily take the, take the missiles out before they could even be launched. So yeah, uh, both the Oslabe and this one are really good. The Oslabe is good because it is, it is cheaper and also smaller, uh, which gives it a slightly smaller profile, even though it is still around the same level of armor. Whereas this ship is actually kind of like an upgrade to the Oslaba, uh, because you can see, of course, the uh, the Sea Whiz, uh, good for stopping planes, missiles, stuff like that. Uh, more planes, more artillery, not, not, not so much missiles. And of course, you still retain the 130mm uh, rapid firing artillery. But overall, the combat cruisers of Microscope, very nice. Uh, you did a great job with these ships. These are very much Haravera compatible. Uh, I might actually choose one of them as a fighting ship. It, it's, it is very high on the list. Uh, despite the fact that we've suffered a lot in the combat, uh, in a national campaign, it might not suffer too much. So, it's work, both of them. Uh, what the hell is this? Guys, um, here is the Piotr's Revenge, uh, which is a slightly armored version of the uh, uh, Peter the Great, uh, designed by Neuronet. Uh, this is, as you can see, if you've watched my streams, you might recognize this ship. Uh, this is just a slightly more armored version of the uh, Peter the First. And, uh, okay, from what... Okay, let's... There's a lot to unpack here. Uh, <laughs> let's start off with the bow real quick. Oh, and also, here are the stats for this ship. Okay, so the bow is actually the, still the same. Uh, we have a huge-ass missile silo full of uh, 800 Altair missiles. Okay, we could use those in our combat when we fight. Uh, so that's very nice. Uh, we also do have uh, a whole bunch of Gao 130 Falx cannons. Yeah, here it is. And we actually have those uh, all around this ship. We have one, two, three, and then the fourth one is at the bow. Ah, that is really good firepower. As I've shown you with the uh, Oslabe, it is really good firepower. Having four Falx guns, it is really good firepower. Among the other firepower that we do have is uh, something that we haven't seen before is the M88 Razor Cannons. Uh, for those who don't know, this is a unique Flight to Haravera gun. Uh, it's a 57mm uh, gun which uh, shoots constantly, and it doesn't stop when you shoot, uh, but it has a lower fire rate. The idea is that it has a liquid cooling system, uh, so uh, it can keep a sustained fire. And so if you have a whole bunch of these on your ship, you could actually basically just have um, a constant stream of 57mm guns shooting in whatever direction that you decide to choose. You see that direction over there? I don't want to see it. Uh, that, that type of thing. Okay, and among other things, uh, the bow has a whole bunch of stationary thrusters. Uh, the construction of this ship is actually very similar to the Peter the Great, so if you know anything about that ship, you'll recognize this ship. But just to give you a little bit of an idea of what this ship is, um, the stationary thrusters, very interestingly, are placed on either side of this ship, so at the bow and the stern. Whereas the rotary thrusters, or I mean the uh, maneuverable thrusters, are actually placed closer to the middle of the ship. Very interesting design choice, uh, not something that you typically see, especially in such a large ship like this. Uh, but uh, I'm sure Neuronet will give their reasons in the comments of this video. So this is just a much more armored version. Okay, this ship is missing the huge-ass R9 Sprint Missile Rack at the very stern of the ship. Instead, we have just a nice, clean 
uh, sort of <laughs> layer of armor. We still do have this flight deck for putting planes here, but we don't have any planes on here actually. These components here are completely empty. Uh, I'm assuming those are meant to be filled up as the campaign goes on. You can fit more guns, more things, you know, uh, I don't know, more crew compartments if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, okay, fuel tanks at the very stern. <laughs> I also absolutely love the ammo placement on this ship. <laughs> just, just a jumbled up mess. <laughs> I love it though. And we have a whole bunch of ammo autoloaders hugging the, the bridge right here. Very nice. That, you know how when a cat feels really comfortable in like tight spaces? Uh, it's a similar feeling here. <laughs> anyway, let's fight some ships with this guy. <laughs> oh, you must be joking with me, shield bearer. A Memnon, a Hagrianian, and a Zephyr? Bruh. I'm not sure if this guy is going to survive. One thing I can tell you for sure is that the bow of the ship is just gonna be deleted. Uh, pretty much the first thing. This ship, I'm assuming, is more designed for a strategical uh, sort of combat, not really tactical. So I'm not going to judge it too harshly in this combat. Okay, uh, where is everyone? Okay, let's start already firing at this guy, whoever it is. Oh, that is a Zephyr. Okay, uh, shoot at the missile silos of this ship. Destroy the missiles. Also, see how the 57mm guns on this ship doesn't stop firing. Uh, that's the Razor Cannons doing their work. Okay, uh, let's shoot. Keep shooting. Okay, now let's shoot at the Hagrianian now. Uh, ooh, that spiker got destroyed. Very nice. Okay, let's move in into such a way that we can fire upon the Hagrianian and I guess not be hit by the Republica. That would be good. Okay, our stern is getting shot up a little bit, but that's fine because there aren't really any major components on that flight deck. Uh, so we should be more or less okay. One thing I was worried about is that the M88 Razor Cannons wouldn't be good at stopping missiles, but apparently it still is. Uh, I'm assuming it's because it's a 57mm gun. Okay, we are losing frames a little bit. I'm also gonna assume it's because of the Memnon. Uh, he is going to spawn here in just a moment. One thing I should probably r remember to do is actually always fire with the Razor Cannons. I keep getting used to the uh, Wingbill Guns and the Spag Guns. Okay, Memnon. Uh, actually, you know what? You... You please die. Uh, mainly so that I could avoid locking the Republica. I want to lock the uh, Memnon so that w I could fire all of my Altair missiles at that guy. And hopefully he's not going to inter intercept all of the missiles that I send at him. Okay, shoot at the Republica. Okay, keep firing. Okay, now maneuver a little bit to the to the left or to the right. Bro, I can't speak right now, so I won't. Okay, our stern is getting a little bit damaged. Uh, that's okay. Let's launch all of our altars at him. See, see what that does to him. Oh! Oh! What an explosion! That dealt a ton of damage. I mean, okay, not so much, but at least the top armor of the Memnon is uh, slightly gone. So, okay, everyone fire upon the Memnon. 
kill the Memnon first. Memnon is the main priority here. He has the artillery, and so do we. But we also have the memes. We have Piotr's revenge on our side. Come on. Keep firing! Right in the middle of that Memnon. Come on. Get a nice little fire going in the middle of the Memnon. Ah, yes. Burn, baby, burn! Come on, you little shield bearer's pet! Die! Come on, oh, can we split it into two? <laughs> Down she goes! <laughs> Down goes Memnon's pet! Or I mean, sorry, Shield Bear's pet! <laughs> oh man, I got so excited I stopped speaking properly. Ah, let's go! We won! That's all I'm gonna say. And we only managed to destroy our stern of the ship, uh, which only had a flight deck, but otherwise no, no major components lost. We shot all of our Altair missiles at the Memnon, which dealt a ton of damage to him, which also opened up his armor from the top, and we've managed to uh, pound him from above. Very nice ship. I could potentially even grab this as a flagman, honestly. With the amount of missile base that this ship has, I could already start shooting missiles uh, in the strategical map and uh, hopefully expend their missiles as well. Maybe even kill a ship or two before entering combat. Yeah, very nice ship. Let's move on. Okay, that is the uh, Piotr's Revenge. Definitely an upgrade uh, from the uh, Peter the First. The only difference is that uh, the designer did put away the R9 sprint missiles and fire control radars and stuff like that. Uh, but, I mean, you could always add those in the middle of a campaign. That's fine. You could always find those everywhere. The only problem is that on its own, it is also pretty damn expensive. I'm assuming most of the cost is actually the Altair missiles. They're pretty expensive, but so are the uh, Falx guns. But you know what? The uh, Piotr's Revenge is work. <laughs> Here I present to you another design of Mr. Vessel. Uh, this is the Sarkata, or Sarkata, I'm pretty sure that is probably more correctly pronounced. Uh, here are the stats for this ship, and here is the ship. <laughs> As you can see, this is a slightly different, sort of slightly differently oriented uh, Hellfire that we've seen previously in this video. Uh, the only difference is that this one actually has a tower with a fire control radar and it does have still R9 sprint missiles. As a matter of fact, this one has actually more of these missiles on board. In terms of armament, we do have four uh, 130mm Falx guns. As I've said before, these are like the best guns in the game, aside from the Shkval cannons. But even the Shkval I don't think are actually as powerful as like four uh, Falx guns. As a point defense, we have 57mm SPAG guns. We have like six of those on board, I'm pretty sure. Yes. As a strategical uh, missile defense, we also do have uh, two missile bays with uh, A100s. Um, the A100s are actually were placed by me. I, I put them there uh, just because uh, I was actually helping uh, Mr. Vessel uh, slightly change this ship before recording this video. Uh, I've decided to put A100s because those are, those are the cheapest missiles and they're good enough. Even though we do have the Altair missile, which were originally in there, I've decided to put A100s because they're cheaper. And I'm pretty sure they are also faster than the Altair missiles. And pretty much uh, this does still look like uh, all of the Mr. Vessel ship designs. Uh, we got the stationary thrusters on the stern right here. Very Nebulous Fleet Command indeed. At the very, we also have one at the bow of the ship. Actually, two of them at the bow. Very nice. A whole bunch of gimbal thrusters, the big ones right here on these sides. Instead of the smaller ones, we have the big ones. 
and some extra thrusters on the bottom to keep up with the speed. Oh, speaking of, these are actually nuclear thrusters which are uh, facing downwards. That is really nice. Uh, that means this ship is probably meant to fight uh, below or to the side of all of the enemies. Because if these nuclear thrusters get shot, they explode. And they explode very nicely. And especially having these fuel lines all around this ship and including all of these nuclear thrusters. Look, I'm not, look, I'm not implying anything. But I think you might get the picture. Uh, let's not look any further and let's not wait, waste any more time. Let's fight with this ship. <laughs> ah, Memnon, we meet again. It seems that you have risen from the dead to fight me again. Oh, shield bearer, you are a stubborn one. That's for sure. All right, let's go, bitches. Fire on the Memnon. One thing that I've just realized is that by not putting the Altair missiles, I cannot actually fire my missiles at the Memnon. That was actually a pretty stupid mistake of me, but I did this with with the uh, strategical mind in mind. So, eh, it's all it's all right. Alright, keep a steady fire on that guy. And I'm pretty sure our angle is actually pretty good. Our heading command is doing very nicely. We are facing it with the bow. With the bow armor, should I say. Even though this guy is also facing us with bow armor, uh, we are keeping shooting at him. And he keeps shooting proximity fuses at us, which, do which doesn't do anything to armor. So, yeah. I don't know why he decided to do that. Maybe it's because of the thrusters. Most likely. That is probably the most likely explanation. Come on, Sarkata. Fire! Weapons free! All weapons free! Uh, PD, shoot that spiker down. There we go. Wait, how the fuck did I damage the middle of the Memnon? What? Actually, that, that might have not been me. That might have been the Memnon damaging himself. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did explain this uh, concept, but if your ship is so large, uh, sometimes your own artillery shells might actually damage components inside of your ship. That's because artillery shells and also rockets uh, typically have a distance that they cover, uh, which is usually inside of your ship, before they become lethal. That's just how the game mechanics work. And if you design a huge ship, uh, sometimes it might happen that if you shoot through, your, through the length of your ship, uh, your artillery shells and or rockets might uh, decide to explode inside of your ship. Which, sometimes that causes damage, other times not. Also, if you like to design aircraft carriers with uh, interior um, flight decks, you have to also keep in mind that sometimes the planes could hit the inside part of the ship and also potentially damage whatever components that are near the planes. Uh, we, also did, we also did just get hit by a Spiker, uh, Altair missile. Spiker, 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 shoot it down! There we go. Nice. And this guy's shooting rockets at me. Okay, there we go. Okay, we've done more damage to the um, the Resus than the Sarkata took uh, from those from that rocket volley. Rocket salvo. I should probably not use the word salvo and volley interchangeably because these are actually two different terms. But yeah, you know what I mean. <clears throat> okay, the Resus is about to die and he is dead, uh, as confirmed by a Twitch streamer uh, through the comms. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. 
And Mouse Chan confirms that the uh, Republica is dead. Shoot at those planes, and we only have the Sikunian left. So let's just let's just bombard him a little bit. Give him a little spanking. Also, we might want to get rid of these uh, marine boarding pods. They're flying upwards, but that's their tactic. They first fly upwards, and then they land on top of your ship. Uh, because most of the time, the bridge is located closer to the top of your ship. Uh, that's why they do that. The idea is that you'd capture the bridge first, and then pretty much you'll deal with the rest of the ship later. If you can take... If you can take control of all of the components of the ship, um, the controls, you mean, I mean, you could do some serious boarding with this. And uh, the Sarkada took barely any, any damage. Only superficial stuff, uh, only being slightly shot at. Uh, that's mainly also because I've been able to shoot down their artillery with my 57mm spag guns, especially with that uh, rocket firing um, Resus. And uh, yeah, the Sarkata is Vork, a very nice ship. Uh, this is also pretty high on my list of um, ships I would choose for the campaign, uh, simply because of how like dependable it could be. Uh, the only thing I would probably change about this ship is I, I would probably um, not have these fuel lines all around my ship. Uh, I mean, it is aesthetic and stuff like that. It does give also a bit of a challenge to not get hit as much. But in my opinion, uh, I would like this ship to be more survivable. And I don't care about lore or anything like that. So yeah, <laughs> Mr. Vessel did a good job designing this ship though. Not, not gonna lie. And also thank you for reaching me, reaching out to me so that I could also um, upgrade the stern area of this ship. Add a couple more uh, PD guns. Very nice. I'm pretty sure that's all of Mr. Vessel's ships. And all the way from the country of uh, very tasty food, here is the Vittorio Veneto, uh, designed by the Italian Jojo, otherwise known as the Italian Tarhan. What's up, by the way? And here is the ship. Uh, now, one thing that I did notice is that this ship is missing a little bit of the ammo. So I am going to really quickly just replace that real quick. And yeah, uh, here are the stats of this ship. Uh, at least the converted version of this ship that I've just done right here. And yeah, uh, this is really just a beefed up gladiator from what I can see. Uh, we got six AK-100mm 100, uh, 100 cannons. Those are really good. Uh, at uh, stopping stuff, I guess, when you have a shit ton of them. And you've got this uh, sort of uh, umbrella type armor all around the ship, except for the bottom parts. So it's very reminiscent of the Gladiator. Uh, we also do have, interestingly, two uh, fire control radars, big ones, hanging from below uh, on either side of the ships. I've just noticed, why, why are they there? That's a pretty interesting uh, ship to put big fire control radars and on the bottom side, which is kind of interesting. Uh, this ship does not have any sprints whatsoever. It does have balash though, covering uh, the top and the bottom angles of the ship. I don't know. I'm assuming this was meant as a way to probably use strategically. Um, I don't know, I might want to ask the designer why they put it, put it there. Yeah, that must be one of the few reasons why this ship is expensive as well. You know, for, for, for something like this. Let's see how this thing fights. And of course we get Hag Hagrianian because these guys are annoying. Uh, but nothing too crazy otherwise. Oh, spiker, 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 shoot it down! Okay, that was just one Altair missile, so that is not too huge of a threat. Uh, my ship just fired it because I overheated the engines. Oh, we lost a bit of the uh, top of the ship. Um, that's actually kind of my fault because I put the ammo compartments in this area of the ship. Uh, do I want to retry this battle? You know what, let's do a ramming order. We can't really do anything otherwise. Come on. Ramming order! And we didn't, we didn't even kill this ship. <sighs> oh 
Okay, that was very rude. Okay. All right. Yeah, the problem is that this ship does not have any proper seawis or any PD. That means you have to use your 100 millimeter guns as your PD. Uh, so every time you see a missile incoming, you have to shoot at it. Otherwise, it is going to deal a hell of damage to you. Okay, now let's fire upon the this guy. I could also try fighting with proximity fuses equipped uh, on the uh, 100 millimeter guns, but I want to fight this combat first. See if I could even survive. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> Yo, guys, whoever just farted, I'm gonna have their ass for dinner. Who did it? Fuck my life! <laughs> Someone's having a bad day. <laughs> What if I equip proximity fuses with this ship? Will it work? Um, let's see if at least we can stop the Altair missiles. Uh, actually, first of all, let's uh, switch over to high explosive and shoot at the Sava. Uh, once we kill the Sava, I'm going to immediately switch over to uh, proximity fuses, load them up as much as I can, as fast as I can, and uh, see if uh, that stops an Altair or two. Actually, the Resus has two of them, so we're gonna have to stop both of them. Because Altairs can do serious damage to this ship, as you've seen. Okay, I did switch over now, but that's because I wanted to guarantee that that missile was going to be stopped. One hundred millimeter. When you have like more than three turrets, uh, it is definitely quite powerful. Also, let's shoot proximity fuses at the, this guy to um, to bypass his uh, balash systems and also cause a little bit of a fire on him. Let's uh, see if we can do that. Maybe take out his bottom thrusters. That would be nice. His bottom thrusters are taking hella damage. Uh, that altar did not get stopped. Oh, that's bad. One thing I just realized is that uh, rockets fired from MRLS tubes typically destroy proximity fuses and uh, don't get damaged themselves. So, okay, let's switch over to high explosive now and let's kill the Sava and use, use the Sava as cover for now at least. There we go, shoot that missile down, and kill the Sava. There we go, there we go. We are absolutely bombarding Strike groups. this one. Oh, we have only like 20% fuel left. Okay, okay. Well then just keep firing at the enemy, I guess. 10% fuel. See if we can kill this guy. You know what, let's, let's try not to move too much. Not to waste any fuel. I mean, we are blowing him up very nicely. Come on. Can you even blow up? Oh, we got 0% fuel. Come on, die! There we go! We won with 0% fuel! <laughs> that is funny! And we took like almost zero damage, what the hell? <laughs> okay, we did lose a uh, fire control radar, but who gives a shit? We killed an entire strike group with just this little uh, beefed up gladiator. <laughs> Alright then, let's get back to the shipworks. Certainly more survivable than a gladiator, despite the fact that I also put some ammo compartments up here as well, uh, which uh, gives it a little bit more of an opportunity to do rapid expansion, uh, 
reactions. But otherwise, this ship is work. And uh, the next one, by the way, is also a pretty similar concept, but uh, it's also really funny. Let's, let's see it. Yeah. Over here, I present to you the Combat Shope, designed by Okabe Suho. The same guy who designed the Sublimat, which I have mentioned in a stream at some point. Uh, this guy actually knows how to des design ships, more or less, uh, as you can see by the absolutely uh, <laughs> Captain Brick of a ship. Here are the stats for this ship, and here is the ship. As you can see, this is a basically an armored cube with uh, two MK2 uh, 180mm Sarmat guns, just two of them. Uh, some 2A37 phalanx systems, uh, four of them on this ship. And on the sides, we have a whole bunch of R5 Zenith missiles. They're generally pretty useful. They're the cheapest kind of uh, tactical missile that you can get. Uh, so that is completely fine. Otherwise, this doesn't have too much else. Uh, of course, fuel, thrusters, thrusters, armor. You also do have a whole bunch of R9 Sprint missiles. And also, Okabe managed to hide these uh, fire control radars very nicely within this uh, little armor shoulder right here. On both sides, I believe this is. Yes. Uh, these uh, Sprint missiles, I'm assuming, are meant for missile defense. Probably strategical missile defense. Uh, but again, I am going to use them here because they do launch Altair missiles, annoyingly enough. Alright then, let's fuck. Oh, Memnon, <laughs> good to see you again. Ah, Memnon. Good to see you here as well. Alright, let's use the 37s as a way to... Uh, intercept all of the missiles and also I guess planes as well see if we can get below uh, the Memnon and launch all of my missiles at him uh, hopefully the sprints on the Memnon should not be able to reach uh, the uh, missiles that I'm going to send at this guy plus I have some pretty thick top armor so I can take many hits with this ship Okay, missile barrage, let's go! Okay, that did not do too much damage, but we did at least blow him up a little bit. I mean, even with just two Sarmat guns, I am dealing quite decent damage. Um, I'm not exactly sure why Okabe decided to choose the Sarmat guns as the main armament. He could have easily went with the Falx guns, the 130mm rapid firing guns. Um, but I guess... I guess it's fine. It's still pretty good. I mean, actually in this mod, the Sarmat is actually pretty damn good. It has a, at least a good enough uh, reload speed. Unlike vanilla game. So yeah, I guess good job to Shield Bear for uh, making the Sarmat actually more or less useful. That is the Memnon dead. Uh, the Republica is using armor piercing against me because uh, I have armor. And naturally, having armor attracts armor piercing. You know. Typical, typical relationship. Okay, let's hold our fire because this Memnon corpse is exploding. And so is that Republica. <laughs> They're both crashing into the ground right there. <laughs> bye bye! My balls went too far. And Mouse's balls went too far, so uh, yeah. That's very nice. Which, uh, I guess, that's kind of bold of him, that he even had any anyway. Oh, it seems like my Sarmat guns are not really getting through with this guy's uh, Balash systems. Ay ay ay. I'm pretty sure that is actually a problem that Frostfor faced in his uh, custom uh, enemy ships campaign is that someone gave him a ship that 
uh, only has like a single Sarmat gun or like two Sarmat guns and it is not able to go through most of the Balash systems that enemy ships have. So yeah, that was fun to watch. But yeah, that's why you gotta shoot everyone from below. Because first of all, they're weak, and second of all, they enjoy it a little better. Being fired at from the bottom. Okay, now let's absolutely uh, peg this dude. No homo, by the way. Oh, gotta adjust my aim a little bit. Sometimes this uh, lock box uh, sometimes glitches out, and uh, yeah, sometimes this ship is just nowhere near that box. That was a very nice killing blow. Very good. Okb sucho. Maladets. Imbovy karabel. Let's get back to the ship works. Yeah. Uh, very nice ship. Uh, it is definitely something at least similar to my Novgorod that I designed before. Except this one is definitely an upgraded version of uh, my Novgorod. Uh, this ship, very armored, can take many hits. And also it can deal a lot of damage uh, if you use these missiles correctly, like I just did with that Memnon. I would probably change the armament from the Sarmat guns to the Falx cannons, uh, because I could probably fit like four of them, or like at least three of them on this ship, and it'll be slightly better armament, uh, at least for a ship of this size at this stage. Um, otherwise, very good ship. And you know what, I guess as a final thing to do for this video, let's just have some fun with another ship that Okabe Suho designed, <laughs> which is really funny. Uh, check this out. <laughs> Alright, uh, yeah, so as I'm going to be fighting all of these guys, I would just like to say uh, thank you all so much for uh, sticking around. Uh, I hope you guys have actually enjoyed this video, even despite the fact that I haven't really uploaded very much recently. Uh, stuff happens, uh, don't worry about that, I will keep uploading as often as I can. That is going to be it for uh, the actual ship review of this video. Um, I hope you guys, again, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one, and I hope you are looking forward to more. Uh, I guess that's going to be it for me. Сейчас я приму болзовую артиллерию. Блять! Буинг! Бонь, я не надо, дядя! Дядя, 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 дядя